there's a couple of things that I'm thinking about. So let's say in our life right now, we live in a, an amazing community. We have a beautiful home. My mom lives close by. My sister is there. We have like this really happy family thing going on. And so these are conditions that are positive conditions that sort of can get you sort of hooked on conditions, but all conditions aren't necessarily positive. So in other words, it's sort of a fine line, isn't it? While it's nice to have conditions that promote more good conditions, it's sort of a possibility of a sort of entrapment, isn't it? Because it's conditions which for the most part are uncontrollable, yes? Right. You, you kind of get where we're going here. Right. We know you're leading into something, but could you lead into it more unconditionally? So the unconditional way of leading into it would be, so there is a desire that has come up for us. An unconditional way to lead in it could be, I wake up and I feel really, really good. Really and good. I can feel my reason for being here. And I can feel the sustaining of the source energy that is within me. We're just asking you to focus on the unconditioned rather than the condition. The non-physical is unconditional. The family is conditional. This is what happens to so many of our human friends who are looking for the positive aspects. And we've been encouragers of that because it's far better to look for positive aspects than negative aspects. But looking at aspects can bring you some of what you don't want. We're just showing you an easier way in. Then once you're in the receptive mode, you can give your undivided attention to your magnificent family and all of the lovely things. But when you're looking for soothing, don't start there. That's all we're saying. Okay. I feel that I'm really good at loving and appreciating what is. And I'm, I'm happy in what is. But a desire that comes up that says, oh, well, we now want to buy a much more expensive home in a new neighborhood. And it feels like a desire for a second. It feels like, oh, what a good idea. Wouldn't that be really nice? But then the moment I start thinking about, okay, we got to find a piece of land. We got to find a builder. We got to build this, the plans and specs and this, that, and the other. All of a sudden I'm like, oh, it's but too much see, trouble. What you're describing here is what we've been getting out all day here today is that Esther didn't awaken when the impulse about Mark Twain came. She didn't decide that she was going to go look for a Joan of Arc statue. That just followed from the vibration that was already there. She didn't go looking for the connecting things that came together. Here's what we really want to say to you. What you all want is the new adventure. In other words, you said something that we want you to say less frequently, and that is, I'm completely satisfied with what is because you're not ever going to be satisfied with what is. What is is just the bouncing off point for so much more. And that's the piece that needs to come into place before any of the rest of it makes sense to you. Because if you find that piece of alignment, the current house that you're living in, while it is certainly adequate, could have more what? It could have a bigger yard. Could have a bigger yard. Is there enough storage in the house? Do you have enough dishwashers? Could you use I'm, an extra dishwasher? I would like a new kitchen, yes. <laughs> do you have a prep station for vegetables with a disposal no, I need in that. that too? I do need that. Is there an adequate pantry? Is the pantry got enough shelves that it's easily accessible? Is your stuff crammed so far back in that you have to take a whole bunch of stuff out before you can get to the things yeah. you want? Do you have enough beds? Is there an adequate guest room? Could you use an extra guest room? You see what we're getting at. Do you have enough garage space for the cars that are coming? No, my, my husband does not. <laughs> and so you've been putting these pieces into yeah. your vortex as you've been living life. One little frustrating moment at a time or one little inspirational moment at a time. You have created a property, mm -hmm. a future property, one of many future properties that is going to be really satisfying to you. So what we want to emphasize here is the surprise and delight element. That's what you're looking for when you want to listen to a comedian. You want to be surprised. That's what you're looking for in a new relationship. You want the new adventure. That's why you keep going on vacations to new and different places. You want the new. You want the surprise. You want the delight. You want the fresh new. You want the uncharted. You want the not yet lived. You want the new experience. You want the expansion that comes from it. And so since that is naturally who you are, then as you are understanding that the laws of the universe are all established to support that. And if you trust that your inner being knows all of the paths for all of that delight at the same time as fulfilling those intentions that are eternally born within you, 
It's like a never-ending, really great itinerary with a concierge in the sky who has lived with you long enough to know what you like and what you don't like and is willing to lead you with no limitations to the most delicious aspects that you have thus far carved out as something that you like. It's always better than anything I could have thought of myself when it comes. We like those words, so let's stay there just for a moment because those words matter a lot of anything that I could have thought of myself. So you did think of it piece by piece by piece. It's just that the mixing of it together caused a creation that you are going to think of, but not by yourself. In other words, it's an inspiration that's going to come from that already formulated plan. So then when I feel the desire for this new home, how do I stay pure to just like the surprise and delight part of it? First, tell us what it might feel like. It would just be really comfortable and it would feel great. It would feel like we would have a lot of space and we could take care of all of our friends. All right, so here, this is up. a big question. This matters a lot. Yes. So does that desire feel like relief? Yes. All right, so we want to talk about that yes. because the relief has to come before the desire can be received. But when the receiving of the desire happens, it doesn't feel like relief. It feels like ecstasy. Because relief is just having moved through resistance. Uh, okay. So that was big. Did you get that? Yeah. That's why these meditations that we're talking about, we mm -hmm. think are important because they will help you find relief. They will help you find relief. They will help you find relief. They will help put issues at bay. They will help diffuse things that are bothering you. They will get you closer to the receptive mode. They won't necessarily put you in the receptive mode, but they will make the receptive mode more likely. Law of attraction will take a close proximity to a receptive mode all the way into a receptive mode. And that's what your question is. How do I sustain that? How do I sustain sustain it until I've locked onto a signal that is really going to give me a big bang for my buck. And the right. answer to that is by caring about how you feel and by continuing to reach for that and by willing to do what may be the best word for it is to be called the preliminary work. The basis of the preliminary work is liking yourself enough to give yourself a break. Caring enough about feeling good, being nice enough to yourself. See how all this all dovetails all, together? All comes in. in other words, it would be nice if you loved yourself, then you'd always be in the receiving mode. But you've got beliefs that keep you from always doing that, which like peeling the layers of an onion, mm -hmm. you're just sort of peeling them away one at a time. So now let's get back to something that you can do about it. So from what you gathered from us, because we rambled a lot, we came at it from every direction, mm -hmm. what do you now feel like doing? What do you think your thought path of least resistance is to get the results that you were asking us for? I think my thought pattern is where I'm feeling right now is like I want to stay on the side of it that feels... The Here's the question. Do you want the house or do you want the thrill of the desire for it? Dun, dun, dun. This matters. Uh, do you want it's the, not house? the house? It's not the house. It's the fun. Are you it's sure? The fun. It's the fun. Yes. Do you want the house or do you want to want the house? I want to want the house. I want to want the house. Because what will follow will be the house. Yeah. But when the house gets there, the juice is over. Right, right, exactly. Now, now you gotta clean the damn else. house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's the desire that is really what you're wanting because the desire leads to everything that follows. Once that desire happens, you're in the sweet spot. Yeah. Once that desire happens, now the happily ever after is happening as it unfolds. And the nice thing is that while that house is coming into fruition, other new desires are being realized. So there's just this steady stream, this passing parade of new fresh desires, new fresh desires, new fresh desires, new fresh desires. Yeah. Esther can remember when the building of the treehouse on the Texas property was like the most important thing that was happening. And every day they went and they climbed the trees as far as they could and they imagined where the treehouse would be and how long the poles had to be to hold it up. And then the big crane came one day and it dropped these 30-foot poles in, six of them around. And it was so exciting to watch the men in the trees and watch the treehouse come to fruition. And, and then it was fun to be in that treehouse. And then it was wonderful to feel the treehouse. And then it was nice to share it with the bird and nice to surprise the foxes in the treehouse and share it with an occasional raccoon. All of that was really, really fun. And the other day, Esther thought, I cannot remember the last time I was in the treehouse. And instead of feeling guilty about not being in the treehouse, instead, she thrilled about all the things that she's been doing since.
because the treehouse only had that much juice in it. It was the process of it becoming. It was the process of it becoming and it's still juicy for others. There are others who go there and have their lunch in it and people that come by and people who view the whole county from the top of the treehouse. In other words, there's lots of juice in that treehouse for lots of people and occasionally Esther even gets a little juice from the treehouse. But the treehouse isn't what's juicing up her life right now. It was at one time. It isn't anymore. There's a steady stream of juicy things that are coming into your experience, you see. And yet there's a sort of conventional thought wave that goes through your human community that goes like, when was the last time you were in that treehouse? Do you know how much that treehouse cost? Do you know how much effort that we put into that treehouse? Do you know how many people it took to build that treehouse? Do you know how many men sacrificed their life in order to build that treehouse? And when was the last time that you've been in that treehouse, Missy? You need to get your priorities straight. You need to get into that treehouse. And we say, no, you don't. Let what's calling you call you and give up the guilt of what you used to do that you're no longer doing because that's old news, you see. And that's really what we want to say about really everything that has already come to physical fruition. Once it comes to physical fruition, it's sort of old news. Yeah. And there's new news that is juicier. Part of it is also just letting go of the old belief system that says, well, this current home is going to be paid off in a few years and... Like just getting used to the idea, it, there's always going to be more to want and we're probably going to have another house and another house and another car and we're going to travel many more places, but just being okay with We agree with, that, with everything that you're saying, every word of it, but blah, 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 right. blah. Because when you say letting go of beliefs, how are you going to do that? How are you going to let go? You're not letting go of it while you're talking about letting go of it because you still got hold of what you're trying to let go of. And so the way you let go of it is by looking forward. The way you let go of it is by letting something else be a higher priority. And we are so wanting to say this today in a way that every one of you walk out the door holding it and knowing it, that the path to that is singular and singularly and simply just by saying, I want to want. I want the feeling of desire. I want the feeling of desire. It is my intention to get into the receptive mode and feel the culmination of what is in my vortex. I want to receive my inner being's collective version of what I want. I know my inner being knows what I want. They've been listening every step of the way. So my inner being, like Abraham, who knows everything that I want, will channel through me if I get into the receptive mode. What could be more important than that? than to have Source guide you about everything that you've carved out that you want. We're talking about even before you came into this physical body. Yeah, that's one of the favorite, my favorite things that you said today is just getting into alignment and then letting your inner being guide you because your inner being knows. I just heard it in such a good way. It just felt like, oh yeah, that's right. I don't have to figure it out. I can just be in the receptive mode, allow, and then just follow that. It is figured out. It is figured out and I created it one piece at a time and it is figured out and my inner being knows and my inner being will tell me if I will listen. Since we've been really talking about the receptive mode, now it's interesting because Esther has been in the receptive mode for years doing this. So now she's meditating and then just sitting in her chair or lying on her bed and just listening to see what the receptive mode has to say, what the receptive mode will receive. Now I have quieted my mind. What am I receiving? And often an impulse just comes. And it's really interesting because in that absence of resistance, an idea feels so big and so fresh that it energizes your body. It gives you direction. It puts clarity in your mind. It puts you in perfect timing. It causes you to rendezvous with the right people at the right time. It makes for a lovely next hour or two. Think about it. We talk about an aide or a concierge or someone who has taken the time to learn everything that you want and knows everything about the area where you are, who just leads you by the hand to one delightful experience after another. But this is exponentially thousands and thousands and thousands of times more because your inner being knows what's in the mind of each and every person that you pass, knows what their potential is for giving you something that you have been looking for, the potential for rendezvousing, the potential for collective co-creating. Esther can't even find words to describe with enough emphasis or details the information that's in this active, dynamic database 
of co-creative partners that you are running around this planet with all existing for one thing and one thing only and that is for the pleasure of your individual rendezvousing with one another